With these notes, we're going to start getting into the actual research and what actual research looks like, what its goals are, but also what are kind of its um, faults and compare the different methods to each other. So this is an introduction to research and how psychologists ask and answer questions. We're going to talk about correlations as well as um, descriptional items with research. So first let's talk about correlations. The measure of the relationship between two items or variables. Notice in the word correlation the name relation. So I want you to actually write it down again or highlight it on your paper that a correlation is a relationship between two variables, hence co, co being two, right, or between two items. And there's two types of correlations. There's a positive one and a negative one, and it's all about which way the two variables go. Okay, so let me give you an example of a positive correlation. Um, an example would be that the number of gallons of gas pumped is positively correlated to the amount spent on gas. And I'm going to use my hands and fingers here, and I think you should as well. So the number of gallons of gas pumped, like the amount of gas, is positively correlated to the amount spent on gas. So the more you pump, the more you spend. Just like you could say, the less you spend on gas, the less you have pumped, right? So the two variables increase together, but also decrease together. So in this scenario, it'll give you one or the other, that as um, gas is pumped, the price or amount spent on gas rises. But it, that also means that they can then turn around. The less gas you pump, the less gas you have spent, or less money you've spent on gas. They rise and fall together. That's a positive correlation. Positive and negative does not mean good and bad. Get that out of your mind right now for the rest of the course. There's other stuff even in unit six that we'll be talking about that is not good or bad. It just means with positive in this scenario, they go the same way. So then in a negative correlation, the variables move in opposite directions. So as one rises, the other falls, right? But then they could also switch. As one falls, the other rises. Okay, so an example, miles traveled is negatively correlated to the amount of gas left in your tank. So the more you travel, the less gas you have in your tank. Just like you could say, the less gas you have in your tank, the more you have traveled. Correlations are not just positive and negative, right? Um, they go both ways within one correlation. So the miles traveled goes up as the amount spent on gas goes, or I'm sorry, as the amount left in your tank goes down. Just like the amount left in your tank goes down, the miles traveled goes up. They could go both ways. So I want you to come up with examples of your own um, of a positive and negative correlation. Come up with your own examples. Feel free to look them up, but I very much encourage you to think of one in your own life, like maybe something about study time or maybe about exercise or TV time, right? So, um, and now what we'll talk about is strong and weak correlations, and you can come up with examples for those as well. Um, so really quickly, a strong correlation is one where the variables are very related, right? So as height increases, weight increases. Okay, yes, those are very correlated, right? That is a strong correlation. There is a strong tie between those two variables. A weak correlation is um, my eye, or let's see, um, the, I don't know, darker my hair gets, the less fun I have. There is no correlation there. Um, th that is a really weak correlation. It's about the strength of the relationship, okay? And we'll talk more about that. So let's quickly talk about scatter plots. Scatter plots, and I want you to write this down. Scatter plots is how correlations are graphed. Write that down. Scatter plots are how correlations are graphed. That's what it looks like on a graph, okay? So the scatter plot is a graph comprised of points generated by values of the two variables in a correlation. So the slope of points depicts the direction and the amount of scatter depicts the strength of the relationship. So over here on the left, you see a perfect positive correlation because that line means that all the variables lined up right on that line. This would be a positive 
slope, hence it's going upward, right? It's a positive slope, much like you've learned in math almost your whole life. But it's a 1, which we're going to talk about that correlation coefficient here in just a moment. So then the middle graph here is a perfect negative correlation. It's because the direction, the slope of the scatter plot is negative, right? The variables are going in opposite directions. And the third graph shows no relationship because all the points here, you can't determine a line of best fit. You could maybe say that that's negative, but it's, it's so scattered that there's really no line of best fit. So if the scatter is less than the scatter in this third graph here, but more so than in these perfect correlations, if you can determine a line of best fit, there's some kind of relationship here. So the less the scatter, the stronger the relationship. So let's talk about the correlation coefficient. This is the number that um, is comprised and makes up essentially what the correlation is. So it's a statistical measure that shows the degree of the relationship between two variables, a correlation, right? So it's indicated by R. So the number itself, there's, let me back up. There's two separate things here. There's the positive or negative sign, which only tells you the direction. It only tells you the direction. And then there's the number that indicates the strength. Hence the two different boxes here. The one down here on the bottom indicates direction of relationship, positive or negative. That is a separate entity that you just look at that and know it's either positive or negative. It has nothing to do with the number. And then the second thing, the box up here says, the number indicates strength of relationship zero to one. The positive or negative has nothing to do with the number, okay? The positive or negative sign has nothing to do with the number. So the first item is the positive or negative sign saying it's a positive slope or negative slope, positive correlation or negative correlation. And then the number, when the number itself, regardless if it's positive or negative, if it's closer to zero, is a weak correlation. The closer it is to one, the stronger the correlation. Okay, so the higher the number, regardless of the direction, the stronger the relationship. So let's do some practice with these. What kind of relationships do the following correlations have? I believe these are in the guided notes that I've given you. If not, or if you're on a loose leaf sheet of paper, write these numbers out, and then I want you to say strong or weak. So negative 0.78. Again, the negative or positive doesn't mean anything about the strength. That just shows you it's a negative correlation. So a 0.78, how strong would that be? It would be moderately strong negative correlation. It's a moderately strong correlation because it's closer to one than not. So a positive 0 0.05, again, positive has nothing to do with the strength. It's a 0 0.05, which would be a very weak correlation, okay? It's closer to zero. Negative 0.43, it is negative, but what about the strength? It's moderately weak. It's kind of somewhere in between because it's, you know, close to 0.5. It's still closer to zero, making it on the weaker end. Positive 0.92, positive, yeah, that doesn't mean anything. So what is the strength indicated by the number 0.9? That is a very strong correlation. Here's another real life example. A scatter plot showing the relationship between height and temperament. Temperament is kind of like, not temper itself, but just your excitability, your ability to quickly be angered or more easygoing. So what kind of relationship is depicted in this scatter? If you have height in inches along the bottom and then temperament scores going up, right? As height increases, it appears that temperament then also increases. Hence, we would have a line of best fit somewhere in this general vicinity. So this would be a moderately positive correlation of 